liquid and and held there. So when you explode something, you lose that energy, and in everything that the, um, the human element does is always going outward. So therefore, from motors, pumps, air conditioners, everything is going out outward. So if you bring something inward, you're actually concentrating that energy within itself. I, I hope that is a little bit clearer. Very good. And I think we have Mikkel Lund from Nordic Living Water Systems out of Canada. Welcome good to morning. It's Rainmaking Time. We're, we're going ahead talking about implosion water without you for all those minutes. I don't know how we're getting away with it, but we are. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to add having to do with water and implosion water as distinct from explosion water? Or would you like to share a little bit about yourself? Yeah, let's uh, talk about water. The main uh, issue about water in our civilization is that we treat it without any deeper understanding of it. We uh, mistreat it, you can say, like first of all by putting it into straight pipes, forcing the water to move in concentric movements, so it's uh, generating more heat as it's pressured through these pipes. And also we use uh, high-pressure turbines to uh, transport the water through these uh, straight pipes. Then it loses its energy, and then we've got all kinds of problems with bacteria build up, etc. What I've read is that even if you purify, you do reverse osmosis, you do all the advanced traditional purification methods at a bacteria level, and you take out all the horrible stuff in water, that what is profound is that there is a distinction having to do with its frequency, that the frequency of that which you just removed from the water is still in the water. Now, that's relevant to the extent if you understand what frequency is. If you do not understand what frequency is, it sounds like the outer limits. Frequency so, is very simple. It's everything that is vibrating at specific rates or various rates even a, a stone has a frequency. Anything you can think about has a frequency that you can measure. I can't measure that myself, of course. But oh. everything is having a vibrational pattern that vibrates at specific frequencies. When you take water into a, a filtration system, which can be necessary because of uh, the pollutants in the water, I'm not going to talk down about filtration. It can be very necessary but it's only part of the solution. Filtration doesn't energize the water. It doesn't comply with the, uh, let's say, the laws that governs the existence of, of water. Can you stand by, please? Manfred Bauer, I'd like you to share your take on frequency. Okay, what the first gentleman said about the ingoing thing or outward going things, uh, that's absolutely correct. What I learned in Germany in, in the dowsing school and from other teachers over there, is that we are talking about that like the left turning effect everything what is normally right turning that means a right turning spin of the electrons on the, in the atom everything what is right turning is negative for a human everything what is left turning is positive for a human the system what i'm having is even changing this direction that means if you go now further into the frequency the frequency there's a scale out there it's the bio angstrom scale it was once developed by a French guy named Antoine Bovis, so it's called the Bovis scale. It was worked on universities in Paris on that thing. And uh, the, f the scale is simply going from zero to infinity. And at the level of 6,500, that's the level on this scale where the zero point is. That means anything below 6,500 bio angstrom is negative for a human. Anything above is positive. Can you stand by, please? Ladies and gentlemen, you are tuning into It's Rainmaking Time. I'm Kim Greenhouse. We're here with a wonderful group of people, John Evans, Bill Cox, Paul Baraccia, Manfred Bauer, and Mikkel Lund, who are all front runners in the safe water industry. And please continue, sir. Okay, that means if you have a device or if you are capable of using a device which is changing the frequency from below 6,500 to above 6,500 uh, means exactly that you even change the spin of the electrons of the atoms. A very simple example is swimming pools. Everybody knows that chlorine or now even the fluoride in the water in California uh, is a poison. 
everybody knows it, but we still use it. The weird thing is, if you energize pool water and you bring it up to a level over 6,500 on that frequency scale, you can still measure the chlorine, but you can't even taste it anymore, and you can't even smell it. But the it, question is, even if that's true, it's still there. It's still there, but it won't harm you because the, uh, it's a left-turning chlorine. It's not a right-turning chlorine. We even had tests made in uh, doctor's offices where they put people into a normal chlorinated pool and uh, they took blood samples and you can see the effect of the chlorine in the blood immediately and then we took other people into a pool which had the same chlorine level except it was an energized pool and the level was at around 25,000, 30,000 and there was no effect on the blood of the people the chlorine didn't harm them at all you know the reality is that most people are going to continue to swim the reality is that most of us are going to take showers that have not only chlorine in them but other types of agents that are not good for the body and in a sense you know you're all offering different structures to contend with this but you're coming from different places am i correct okay um to kind of get it in a little bit better perspective uh, as far as the chlorine is concerned or any other compound what happens is the elements within that compound get restructured therefore they they change their polarity from positive to negative negative to positive and therefore they don't recombine to make that chlorine compound per se as it were so therefore it becomes neutralized can I get some feedback from Manfred on that? Well, I would not say it's neutralized because chemically you can still measure it. And there are some other things. It's even, let me give you one little story uh, about poison. I had a customer, his wife was allergic to fire ants. And we know that fire ant bites are very annoying. And uh, she was absolutely allergic. That means if she gets a bit from a fire ant, she had to be in a hospital within an hour to get a shot. And it happened Sunday morning, she was working in the garden, stepped into a hill with fire ants and got around about 13 to 15 bites on, the, on her foot. And she ran in the house and she told her husband, bring me to the hospital. And he had one of our things, what Kim already knows is, is one of our energy mugs, which is a double walled mug containing that energized water or gel. And he said, okay, let's give it a try. And he just, just simply put that mug over her foot without water, just the dry mug. And within five minutes, the reaction was gone. Just because the poison from the ants was left turning. So that means the poison was still there, but it didn't react with her body. What does the public do with this information then? In other words, translated, you and I go about our days, the public, we all go about our days. So are you saying that the composition may be the same in the sense that the pollutants or the toxic materials can still be in the water, but you make a frequency change and all of a sudden it doesn't have the impact on the body? I don't get it. Uh, that's, that's correct. That's, that's absolutely correct. If you change the mm -hmm. frequency over that specific level, what I said, uh, the energy level of the water is so high that the pollutants in the water would, will not disturb your body anymore. You know, Dr. Wolfgang Ludwig talked about the fact that water stores and carries information, which all of you know. That's correct, yeah. But the reality also is that he said that Typically, in science, people should be not necessarily looking at matter. When you're looking at the frequency, don't necessarily just look at the matter. Like, we measure the matter, how much bacteria is in X. But there's something having to do with this notion of frequency, measuring the frequency that's relevant to our health, and not just what's in the matter of the water. Does that sound correct? That sounds yeah, correct. Yeah. Bill Cox, are you there? Yes, I'm with you. Okay. Do you have any questions to ask of these other gentlemen or any input here? Well, no, I'm very interested in their work, and I'm really pleased to see they're doing it. I wonder if they they're must be familiar with um, the message from water by Masirat Himoto. They call it HADO, H-A-D-O. Yeah, I'm familiar with him, yeah. Uh, it's described as the world of subtle energy related to consciousness, or chi, uh, as mm -hmm. the Japanese would be like ki or chi, uh, which relates to how we can affect the water and how it affects us. And they've been able to, with magnetic resonance, to find microclusters 
and uh, it's a wonderful.